Hi, my name is Jeff Glassberg, and I am director of the Mount Sinai Sickle Cell Program. I'm also an associate professor, um, and I practice in emergency medicine and hematology. So sickle cell disease occurs in about 100,000 Americans and about 3 million people worldwide. It's most common in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, for example, in the country Ghana, there are 100,000 babies born every year with sickle cell disease. And it affects people who are descended from areas of the world that have had malaria. So that can be Africa, South America, Middle East, any place that has a history of malaria um, will have some sickle cell disease coming from it. Sickle cell disease, um, it's a disorder of the blood. There's a, there's a genetic mutation in one of the proteins in your blood and it causes effects in every part of the body uh, because blood supplies every part of the body. But the most common manifestation that we see is pain. Patients will have episodes where suddenly they feel terrible pain uh, that is described as worse than the delivering a baby, worse than having your bones broken, and they very often need to come to the hospital to be treated for that pain. Sickle cell disease today is uh, in a place where we really have tremendous optimism and things have changed tremendously. So it's a very promising time for sickle cell disease. And I remember back 10 years ago in 2010, we were um, having a lot of academic conferences because that was the 100th anniversary of the discovery of sickle cell disease. The, the genes had been around for much longer, but a, a hematologist discovered sickle cell disease in 1910. And when we were discussing the state of sickle cell disease 100 years later, we were lamenting the fact that we had one medicine to treat this disease, which was really unfortunate, especially because we understood so much about it that it was really unthinkable that there was only a single medicine available to treat our patients. Fast forward 10 years and we have 40 medicines that are in development. We have four medicines that are really good medicines that are now FDA approved and we are giving to our patients. And that really has happened over the last two to three years. And then we have gene therapy, uh, which means you get cured of your sickle cell disease. So um, gene therapy is not quite at the point where it's just should be the option for everybody because you do need to get chemotherapy to get gene therapy, but um, we are really at the cusp, I feel, of curing the disease. And while we wait for this cure, uh, we have so many new medicines in our arsenal that will be able to control the disease to a level that we just have not been able to do. So it is an incredible time for sickle cell disease as a community. Um, and it's also a good time if you don't have a sickle cell specialist to come see somebody who is really plugged into all of this to make sure that you are uh, availing yourself of all these new therapies. So we were very worried, obviously, when COVID-19 uh, initially uh, became a problem for us uh, in uh, North America. This is especially true because one of the things that people with sickle cell disease get is something called acute chest syndrome, which is a situation where the lungs fill up with fluid and it becomes harder to breathe and it becomes harder to put oxygen into your blood. So since COVID is a disease where you get basically a viral pneumonia, I was very scared at the beginning of this about what was gonna happen to all the people that I take care of. As it turned out, um, it was not nearly as bad as I had feared. Um, as we know in general about COVID, the older you are, the worse it is. And in general, our patients tend to be a little bit younger, um, partially because with sickle cell disease, the lifespan is, is, is decreased. The average lifespan for someone with sickle cell disease is probably around 50 years old. Um, so we have a lot of young patients, um, and our patients actually wound up doing quite well. 
so we were very relieved because we thought um, just getting COVID could immediately tip you into getting acute chest syndrome, which is a very dangerous situation. What we learned about COVID not being quite as bad as we had feared um, is that people with sickle cell disease need a lot of medical care at baseline. They, they need to be watched closely. They need to have their labs checked. They're on uh, very often on very specialized medicines. Um, and what we didn't know at the beginning of this is, is it more dangerous for you to come to the hospital and get your medical care and get your medicines? Or is it more dangerous uh, for you to stay home and not get your medical care, but protect yourself from coronavirus. As it turned out, especially for our young people um, who are on um, specialized medicines like hydroxyurea is the most common medicine we use, it definitely seems like the best thing uh, is to come to the hospital and get your medical care. You don't want unnecessary visits. You don't want to be just coming in um, uh, if, if it can be avoided, but uh, foregoing medical care seems to be uh, worse, that it's not, it's not worth the, the downside, that um, people with sickle cell disease um, will, especially the young ones, will do quite well um, if they're unfortunate enough to get coronavirus. It seems like they um, don't have any additional risk, or, or if there is additional risk, it's not, it's not very large above and beyond what a normal young person would experience. Um, but the risk of not getting your medicine or not getting your labs checked, that's big. And, um, you know, you could have sickle cell crises or, or, or problems uh, like that. So um, especially now that the pandemic is cooling off and uh, we have very low rates of, of uh, coronavirus in New York City, this is a great time to come in and get your medical care and catch up on, on things that um, maybe didn't get taken care of during the height of the pandemic. But also, uh, if we do have another flare up, um, we want to minimize travel. This is still an infection that you don't want if you don't have to get, but there are real dangers to not getting uh, your medical care. And um, so you, you shouldn't um, uh, put a stop to all visits to the hospital. Absolutely. Anybody can have a bad outcome with this virus, even a perfectly healthy 25 year old person. So this is not an infection that you want. Um, and if you get it, you can spread it. So even if you do well, um, you may give it to somebody else who won't. Uh, so it's absolutely true that we should be very cautious. We should continue to wear masks. We should continue to wash our hands and we should avoid unnecessary travel and unnecessary trips to crowded places. So we do want people to be careful and to continue to protect themselves from coronavirus, just like everyone else in New York City. We have been fortunate enough through this pandemic to learn a lot about telemedicine. Um, and so uh, we have expanded those options um, where you can really uh, see a sickle cell specialist um, through telemedicine wherever you are. Um, uh, in the New York area, or actually the tri-state area. We are um, now certified to practice telemedicine visits in New Jersey and Connecticut. So um, if you're looking for a sickle cell specialist or if you're followed by us, um, some of your visits can be telemedicine and we can, we can help take care of that. Um, but there will definitely come a point where um, if uh, if you need medical care, if you need your labs drawn, if you need to be checked, that it makes sense to come in and the hospitals have done an excellent job of making it safe to come to the hospital 